This is Jared Horak for the runawayhorse.com and I'm back with my latest Road to Breeders' Cup 2022 video series. I've covered a bunch of races in this series and also I just started my Road to Kentucky Derby 2023 and then Oaks 2023 video series with the Iroquois and the Pocahontas and you can find those on my YouTube channel. I just posted those videos. But now we're going to go back and we're going to do the Breeders' Cup series. And speaking of the Breeders' Cup, if you're interested in my Breeders' Cup full cards, that annual product, I will be covering uh, the, the two both days in full cards from Keeneland at therunawayhorse.com on my sales page. And some other full cards I cover, I'm going to be covering the Autumn Meet from Santa Anita Park, which starts on September 30th. And then I'm going to be doing um, the Bing Crosby season from Del Mar and then the Santa Anita Park Winter Meet. You can find all that at therunawayhorse.com on my sales page. Now let's get into the analysis of this video. And I'm going to be doing three races. I'm just going to do a couple quick picks for the summer stakes and the, and the Natal mistakes towards the end of this video. I'm going to start with the Woodbine Mile. And that will be the ninth race from Woodbine on Saturday, September 17th, 2022. The Grade 1, $1 million Woodbine Mile. It's for three-year-olds and up. One mile on the turf with a scheduled post time of 5.35 p.m. Eastern Time. Number one, Mighty Heart can impact the pace in here, but I'm concerned about the footing. She's 0 for, or, or he's 0 for 3 on turf, 0 for 2 on turf at Woodbine. Last time out in a turf stakes race at a mile and a quarter at Woodbine was fifth, beaten a length and three quarters. So he's done his best work on all weather ground in route races, and he's usually up on the pace when he does that good work. Number two, Ivar. Uh, this one is a bit interesting. It's four to one morning line for Paulo Lobo, a quality trainer. Joe Talamo knows this one well, and uh, he did win a grade one. Uh, that was in 2020, uh, the Shadwell Turf Mile at Keeneland. And then he ran a good race last year in the Breeders' Cup Mile. Uh, that was uh, at Del Mar last fall, and he was thir third, beating a length and a half at 24 to one odds. Then he finally made his return in a $100,000 stakes race in Indiana last time out on July 9th. And he rallied from sixth place as the favorite to win by a length. Earned a decent speed rating. So he earns decent speed ratings. He's got the class. It's just can he back up wins? Because typically uh, when he's been winning and then he comes back in his next start and he hasn't been winning. So he hasn't been able to put those back-to-back -back wins. But he is 6 for 12 lifetime with a little less than a million dollars in career earnings. Uh, Waka Naka is a four-year-old filly for trainer Bill Mott. Uh, she's very consistent. 13 starts, 7 wins four seconds, and a third. She finally got that uh, North American um, grade one, a graded victory uh, because she was knocking on the door uh, in the Honey Fox at Gulfstream Park. Uh, she ended up finishing second, rallying from up the pace. The Distaff Turf Mile, uh, she ended up finishing third there. Uh, the grade one Just a Game at Belmont Park, she was second there. And then the grade two Dance Smartly at Woodbine last time out at a mile and a 16th. Slow early, fast late. She made a nice impressive looking move and she was able to win that one over a next out winner. So Wakanaka is one from off the pace as uh, a filly uh, that could end up making an impact if the pace heats up. Finest Sound. This one is a veteran gelding, a five-year-old gelding coming in uh, from Great Britain. 20 career starts, four wins, five seconds, and seven thirds. Fairly consistent horse. Back-to-back uh, -back second place finishes in a group three and a group two. Uh, so, so I'm I think maybe just a cut below on the class stand standpoint here, uh, but I wouldn't be shocked if this one was able to finish somewhere in the top three. Very consistent and has got that uh, group ability. The number five, Modern Game, seven to five on the morning line and probably deserves to be the favorite in here. A five for 10 lifetime with two seconds and a third was my top pick in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Turf last year. A grade one at Del Mar last fall and won that one easily. And then started this year with a group one win in France then was third in a group one in France after that. Uh, stubbed his toe a little bit, finishing fifth in an 11-horse field, but I think that seven furlong distance um, at, at Deauville on July 10th was maybe a little bit short. And then last time, one mile against three-year-old and up company, ended up finishing a good second behind a quality horse. And I think that, that this one has a lot of class. Three-year-old still has some upside. Uh, it's fresh. Charles Appleby is always dangerous when he ships horses. Uh, from overseas, and I think that this one with William Buick in the saddle, uh, the winning rider, definitely the one to beat. Cheryl Spite, 12 to 1 morning line, 5 for 12 lifetime, was on a nice roll earlier this year, 
uh, winning the grade three Tampa Bay and the Maker's Mark Mile. But since then, in the Turf Classic, was a well-beaten fourth, was third in the Salvatore Mile, beaten eight lengths. The Connaught Cup was fifth in a 10-horse field, racing wide last time out. Needs to turn it around and find that sharp form again. Number seven, Homer Screen for trainer Neil Drysdale. This one's five for 10 lifetime, but all of those wins were in Brazil. Uh, did finish second in the Grade 3 American Stakes at Santa Anita in June, and then fourth in the Eddie Reed last time out. The runner-up was the next out graded stakes winner. He's going to have to step up his game. Number eight, Get Smokin' is one that certainly could impact the pace, and it's been doing that uh, throughout his, his career, uh, but he's been a, a bit off form now. Did win the Seek Again Stakes last year and was second in the Grade 3 Tampa Bay behind Cheryl Spite earlier this year. The Grade 3 Arlington Stakes missed that one by a head, but then the last two, the Grade 3 Forbidden Apple, stalked, battle on the pace, and finished an even fourth. And then last time out, the Grade 1 Four Star Dave set the pace, weakened to fourth in a five horse field. Rafael Hernandez gets aboard. He's probably going to try to send this one right out to the front. Number nine, War Bomber for trainer Norm McKnight. Exits a victory in the Grade 3 Seagram Cup on all weather ground at Woodbine at a mile and a 16th. It's two for three at this distance on turf and three for four overall on the Woodbine turf course. He's going to have to pick it up a little bit, though. He does like to be involved early. He went wire to wire last time. I don't think he can get in front in this spot. This is a tougher spot. Number 10, Town Crews, another one that likes to get up on the pace. And this one won the Woodbine mile wire to wire at eight to one last year. But since then, the grade two Nearctic after that, he was fifth in a 10-horse field. And then this year, in the Niagara Stakes at a mile and a quarter, he was eighth, beaten seven lengths. And then last time out, the grade two King Edward at one mile, battled on the pace, finished fifth, taking the blinkers off, and he will be part of the pace. Finally, number 11, March to the Arch. Seven-year-old gelding, more than a million dollars in career earnings. Likes this Woodbine turf course. Eight starts, three wins, two seconds, and a third. He doesn't have any speed, and he wasn't able to get involved in the King Edward. He was just too far back. He ended up finishing a non-threatening fourth. The Connaught Cup before that, he was second. He's one that has the ability. He was fourth in this race last year. He has the ability, I think, to hit the board at a price. So March to the Arch should be running late. So overall, we'll give out the top four selections in here. I cannot go against the favorite. I think that Modern Games has a lot of ability. I just think he's probably classier than these. He's fresh, and I think he's going to probably, if he runs his race, he's going to come away with a victory. Uh, he's got at least enough positional speed to keep the leaders in his sights. So Modern Games, number five, will be my top choice. My second choice, I'll make number two, Ivar. Wakanaka, number three, will be my third choice. And then I'm trying to get number 11, March to the Arch, somewhere in underneath to help spice up the exotics. So my top four. 5, 2, 3, 11 in the Woodbine Mile. Now we'll jump into those other two races that I mentioned. Uh, and the Woodbine Mile was a win and you're in for the Breeders' Cup Turf Mile. Uh, now I'm going to do the Grade 1 Summer Stakes. It'll be race 7 at Woodbine on Saturday, September 17th. And that one is a win and you're in for the Breeders' Cup Juvenile. And then this one-mile turf race with a scheduled post time of 4.22 p.m. Eastern Time. Number 1, Mysterious Night. Again, Charles Appleby, this one clearly looks like the one to beat, and I will make him my top choice uh, in the summer stakes. He's 6-5 to five morning line, no value there, but he's run five times overseas, first four starts in Great Britain, and then he won a Group 3 in France last time out. In Great Britain, he was uh, placed he placed third in a pair of Group 2s. Uh, they were all sprint races. He started out at six furlongs, and then his last two starts have been at seven furlongs. I don't think the one-mile distance is going to give him any trouble he, this doesn't seem like uh, there's any superstars in this race, and I think that he uh, should work out a good ground-saving trip under William Buick and probably will get the job done at low odds. Now, if I'm, you're looking for a price in here, uh, I think I'm going to go with a Chisler number 4 at 12 to 1. I'm going to try to get that one somewhere in, in underneath. Look good in the all-weather debut going wire to wire at Woodbine, and then six and a half furlongs in the soaring uh, free stakes a race common to a few of the horses running in this race. I didn't think he ran too bad. From post eight, he broke 10th and last. And he was up wide, and then he made a middle move from sixth to third. He got to within a half length of the lead in the stretch, and then he flattened out a little bit, fourth a length and a half. Uh, so now a uh, second turf start, and then uh, two sprints uh, to a route. I think that he can improve, hit the board, maybe finish in somewhere underneath. Uh, but Mysterious Knight is certainly going to be my top choice. Uh, in the summer stakes. Now we got one more race to go here. 
and we're going to do uh, the Natal Mistakes. It's going to be the 10th race from Woodbine on Saturday, September 17th. This one is a Breeders' Cup win and you're in for the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies. This one-mile turf race uh, is a grade one, $500,000, uh, 10th race uh, at one mile on turf with scheduled post time of 6.10 p.m. Eastern time. Cairo Consort's probably going to be the favorite. It's two to one, back-to-back -back wins, including a stakes win at six and a half furlongs at Woodbine. Last time out, a G. Lari is another one for Grand Motion you can use. Very impressive win at Colonial Downs in the career debut. Uh, Adora, Adora improved, finishing uh, in that um, catch a glimpse last time, finishing second. Not a bad effort there. That's one that I certainly think can do something in here. But I'm going to go with a Wickenheiser on number six as my top choice. This one's three to one morning line. I was impressed with the debut where she was weaving through traffic. Six furlongs on the turf from an outer post, and she won nicely by a half length. Second time out, they made her the favorite in that uh, catch a glimpse. And in that race from post 11, she broke 10th. Uh, she, she moved up in the stretch. She was fifth, and then she just kind of ran evenly after that. So now, second start after a layoff. Uh, and I think she can improve over a route of ground, because look at the pedigree here. Lemon Drop Kid is the sire, and Muntju, the dam sire, Certainly the average winning distance for the sire and dam sire, very high. So I think the longer, the better for her. And two sprints to a route and second after a layoff for trainer uh, Kevin Attard. Luis Contreras will stay with her. And I think that she can get the job done here, maybe at a little bit of a price. So number six, uh, Wickenheiser will be my top choice in the Natalma. So that will wrap up this Breeders' Cup win in your end video. Each week that the Breeders' Cup does these videos, I'll, um, that does these races, I'll be back with videos covering them. And until I see you next time, uh, good luck at the races.